Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnichi. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester one, that is introduction to networks. This is chapter four, and it's section 4.3, data link layer protocols. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe the layer two frame structure and identify generic fields. Identify several sources for the protocols and standards used by data link layers. The data link layer, the data link layer is responsible for the exchange of frames between the nodes over physical network media. It allows the upper layers to access the media and control how the data is placed and received on the media. Specifically, the data link layer performs these two basic services. One, it accepts layer three packets and packages them into data unit called frames. It controls media access control and performs error detection. Data link layer sublayers. So now data link layer is divided into two sublayers. Remember the OSI layers? So layer seven, application, six, presentation, five, session, four, transport, three, network, two, data link layer. Now you need to know two more layers because we have a sublayers. So we have a logical link control and media access control. The LLC is upper layer defines the software process that provides services to the network layer. It places information in the frame that identify which network layer protocol is being used for the frame. This information allows multiple layer three protocols such as IPv4 and IPv6 to utilize the same network interface and media. Media access control or MAC layer this lower sublayer defines the media access process performed by the hardware. It provides data link layer addressing and delimiting of data across the physical signaling requirements of the medium and the type of the data link layer protocol is used. Separating the data link layer into sublayers allows for one type of frame defined by the upper layer to access different type of media defined by the lower layers. So for example, here the data link layer is, will allow, it doesn't matter what we have, what kind of like a, a medium we have, copper, the data link layer will support that. If it's a wireless, fiber optic, or yeah, then we have only three. We have a copper, that's like an ethernet, then we have a wireless, and then we have a fiber optic, which is optical. This is a data link layer formatting data and for transmission. So here's a, up to there, it's all layers from layer seven up to layer three. It's just, as far as the data link layer is concerned, it's just data. So the data link layer would add its own header and their own trade there as well. In the header, for example, we have some uh, frame start. This is a specific bit pattern denotes the start of the frame. And then we have the end of the frame. So somehow the data link layer is gonna be able to identify which is it actually the control uh, data and which is uh, just the regular data or informational data. So here we have the start of the frame and end of the frame. And then what we have is the addressing. So MAC address, the source MAC, well, destination MAC address first, then the source MAC address, then type, what, the, what kind of a packet is it? Control frame, is it, is it a control frame? But, uh, and then the data. At the end, we have the trailer, which we use for error detection. This is the frame check sequence. Common physical wide area network topologies that we have, it's point to point. Point to point topologies has two uh, devices or routers, for example, point to point connection. Then we have a hub and spoke topology. This is like, a, for example, we have a hub here in the middle and then connect it to spokes. And then we have a full mesh where every connection uh, is, or every spoke, for example, is connected to every other spoke. That's a full mesh topology. Half duplex and full duplex communication. In a half duplex communication, only a single device can send data at a time. So one device is sending. You, if the two devices try to send at the same time, then there will be a collision. If there's a collision, they will notify everybody there's been a collision. They will send the jamming signal and then they will go through the back of a uh, timer and then try it again. Listen to the carrier. If the carrier is free, it means uh, uh, they can start sending. 
So they go through the protocol called carrier sense multiple access collision detection. So remember that, yeah. So I can't write it because with this pen I can't write. I'm not that good. So carrier sense multiple access collision detection CD. That means that they listen to the carrier. If the carrier is free, they can start sending. So carrier sense, that's listening to the carrier. Multiple access means that everybody has got same priority, they can everybody can access it, multiple devices can access it. And then we can detect. If there's been a collision, we can detect. So collision detection. If it's a wireless, then they have a collision avoidance. So CA. They can't detect collision, they can just try and avoid it. That doesn't have to do with the full duplex. Don't have to worry about this at all. You can just start sending, you don't listen to the carrier. The devices can start to send simultaneously. Physical local area network topologies. So in the no local area network, we have a star topology. So all devices, this is the most uh, used out there in topologies. The star topologies, which you have, uh, for example, a device uh, like a switch here in the middle and all the routers, your end devices, sorry, not routers, end devices, they're connected to the switches as well as the routers. Then um, extended star topology is like when you have uh, two more switches, two switches connected together and then we have an extended star. So star, this is a small office, extended star, you have two switches connected together, uh, then they share, for example, the VLAN information and so on. Then we have a bus topology, legacy topology, where you had all the connection, that all the devices will connect to this cable, it's a bus topology, or the ring topology where the, the token will go through the ring, around the ring, and the devices will send uh, information only if they have uh, that token. So out there you will see this is the most famous for everything. Extended star topology is used in production network. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully to see you in 4.4 media access control. Bye bye.